What's up, I'm Vin and today I want to take a look at the 2019 AP Calculus ABBC question 4 from the free response. So let's get started. For part A, we want to find the rate of change of the volume of water in the barrel with respect to time when the height of the water is 4 feet. So that entire first sentence tells us what we're looking for is dv over dt when h is equal to 4 feet. So for questions like this, we need to be able to translate that entire sentence into differential notation. But if you think about the context of the question, this is a cylindrical barrel and it has a diameter of two feet and water is being drained out of this thing, but the radius of this thing is not changing at any point. So what that tells us is that R is constant. And this is gonna be helpful when we have to take a derivative because if we treat R as a constant, it's gonna make the derivative step much easier. So what we're starting with here is that the volume is pi times r squared times h. But once again, since r is constant, if the diameter is 2 feet, the radius is just equal to 1 foot. And we'll put all the units at the end. So that tells us the equation we're going to be taking the derivative of is volume equals pi times h. And now we're going to take the derivative, but we're going to take the derivative with respect to time of both sides. And if we do that, this tells us that dv over dt in general is equal to pi times the derivative of h is dh dt. And then what we should do from here is use the equation that they gave us for dh dt. And this is going to tell us that dv over dt is equal to, and we're going to have pi times dh dt is negative 1 over 10 square root h. So we're just going to write negative pi over 10. That's the result of multiplying pi by negative 1 tenth and we have square root h. So then the last thing we need to do is plug in h equals 4 feet. So we're just going to use the notation here. So we have dv over dt at h equals 4 feet. And if we plug in 4 for h, the square root of 4 is 2, and we're going to have 2 over 10 is 1 fifth. So we'll have negative pi over 5. And just know in this question we were talking about feet and seconds. So it was feet per second, but since it's volume, volume is three dimensions, so it's cubic feet. We're not just going to write feet there, we're going to have to write feet to the third power. So it's cubic feet per second. If they were asking about the rate of change of area, then it would be square feet per second, or if it was the rate of change of the height, it would just be feet per second. So since it's volume, we're going to put cubic feet here, and this is our answer to part A. So for this next question here, we want to know when the height of the water is three feet is the rate of change of the height of water with respect to time increasing or decreasing? Now for this question is a very dangerous trap. If you rush and just plug three into the derivative and observe that negative one tenth times square root three is negative and just choose decreasing, that's a very, very dangerous trap here because they're not asking you if the height of the water is increasing or decreasing. They're asking you if the rate of change of the height of water with respect to time is increasing or decreasing. And that expression that we have underlined here is really just fancy language for dh over dt. So if you want to restate this question so it's a little bit more clear, we're really looking for is dh dt increasing or decreasing at h equals 3. So to answer that, we have to take the derivative of that function. So if we're starting with dh over dt is equal to negative 1 over 10 square root h, which I'll write as h to the 1 half, so we could do power rule, we need to take the derivative of this function with respect to time. So when we do that here, just think the derivative of dh dt, that's d squared h over dt squared. That's our second derivative. And now on the right side, we have negative 1 over 10 times, and now we're doing power rule. We have 1 half h to the minus 1 half, but be careful. We're taking the derivative with respect to time. So when we encounter this variable h, we have to tack on an extra dh dt. And from here, what we want to do is we're just going to make a substitution for dh dt using this equation here. So we could combine some stuff. We got negative 1 over 10 times a half. That's negative 1 over 20. We have h to the negative 1 half. I could call 1 over square root h. And for dh dt, we're just going to plug in. We've got negative 1 over 10 times square root h. Now, in this question here, we could emphasize that h is greater than 0. So for part b, since h is greater than 0, we don't have to worry about square roots of negative or square roots of 0, so we could just cancel this stuff out, and it's equal to positive 1 over 200. So what we could say from here, we want to know, is the height of the water 
the rate of change of the height of water with respect to time increasing or decreasing at h equals 3 feet, well, the second derivative is always equal to 1 over 200 when h is greater than 0. So, so this is true, once again, when h is greater than 0. So what we could say is that since the second derivative is always equal to 1 over 200 when h is greater than 0, that tells us that the rate of change of the height of water with respect to time is increasing. So for this last part here, they want us to use separation of variables to find an expression for h in terms of t. And we have this initial condition here that at t equals 0, the height of the water is 5 feet. So if we write that initial condition in function language, that tells us that h of 0 is equal to 5 if we're trying to come up with the function h of t. So what we could do is we're just going to write dh dt, our original equation here, and we're going to do the separation of variables. So we have dh dt equals negative 1 over 10 times the square root of h. So the algebra that we could do here, if we want to separate variables, we want everything with an h on one side, and the t terms, we want all of those on the other side. So what we could do is we could multiply both sides by dt, and in the same step, I want to get the square root h with the dh, I could divide both sides by square root h. So now we can see how things are going to cancel out we're going to have dt over dt cancel, and we'll have square root h over square root h cancel. So in the next line here, what we're going to have next, dh over square root h, which we could just write that as h to the negative 1 half power. And now this is equal to negative 1 over 10 times dt. So that's the only stuff left after everything cancels. And now what we want to do to get rid of these differentials is take the antiderivative of both sides. But on the right side, I'm going to throw the antiderivative between because this is a constant that we would just factor out. So in the next line, what we're going to have here, the antiderivative of h to the negative 1 half is going to be h to the negative 1 half plus 1, which is 1 half, and the reciprocal of 1 half is 2. So we just write that in front. And now on the right side, we have the antiderivative of dt is just t, so we'll have negative 1 tenth times t plus c. And just know you could write the constant on either side, but it's just more common to write it on the side of the um, independent variable here since we're solving for h. So what we want to do at this step, this is our general solution. So this has a name. We don't have to write this down, but this is a crucial step of the question. This represents all of our solution curves here, but we want to know the particular solution when t is equal to 0 and our h value is 5. So now we're going to plug this into our general solution. So remember, this is t and this is h. So when we plug that in, what we're going to have next is 2 times h to the 1 half. And if h is equal to 5, 5 to the 1 half is square root 5. And that's going to be equal to negative 1 tenth times 0 plus c. So now that we plugged everything in, this tells us what our value of c is, and our value of c is going to be 2 times the square root of 5. So then what we do with the c value is we plug it back into our general solution, and then that resulting equation we just have to solve. So let's do that now. We have 2 times h to the 1 half power equals negative 1 over 10 times t, plus c is 2 times the square root of 5. So the last thing we have to do here is just do the algebra. So we can multiply this entire equation by 1 half, and this 2 is going to cancel out. We'll have h to the 1 half power, or we could call it square root h, is equal to, when I do 1 half times negative 1 over 10, that's going to give me negative 1 over 20. And we have a t here, plus if I do 1 half times 2 square root 5, that's just going to be square root 5. Now from this step, the last thing we need to do is just square both sides. So this is going to give us our final equation. We have h is equal to negative 1 over 20 times t plus the square root of 5, and this whole expression is being squared. Okay, well this is going to conclude this video on the AP Calculus ABBC free response question. If you found this video to be helpful, please like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel. And if you got any requests, just leave the topics you want me to cover in the comments section below. And thanks for watching.